Um, Mikhail is giving the talk. Hi, thanks. Um, so this is joint work with uh, Georg, my advisor, and uh, Yannick. Uh, we are hanging around all the conference during the World Conference, so feel free to talk to any of us. Um, so Mimo Wimble is a cryptocurrency that allows you to make private payments without having to download the entire, um, the entire blockchain, without having to download 200 gigabytes of data when you start a new client. Um, it was proposed in 2016 by an anonymous person going by the name of Tom Elvis Juster, um, which is the name of Voldemort in the French version of Harry Potter. And uh, it was built on the top of three main ideas. Uh, it's a standalone cryptocurrency, but it was built on three main ideas that were initially envisioned uh, for uh, Bitcoin, and that, uh, for which Gregory Maxwell should be credited. Uh, namely, confidential transactions, which adds up privacy on the top of Bitcoin, coin join, which adds up anonymity, and transaction cut-through, which adds up scalability. After this publication, the author disappeared, never to be found again, and um, some people took over this work, mostly Andrew Polstra, and a couple of months later, um, another anonymous person going by the name of uh, Ignotus Peverell, Igno for friends, um, develop an implementation and it's now launched. So in other words, what happened is that Gregory Maxwell put some forum, blog po some forum posts on Bitcoin Talk and this random guy appears, puts uh, this text file and three, three years later, um, a cryptocurrency is launched, potentially worth billions of dollars and there is no proof of security. Um, so what we did together with Georg and uh, Yannick was uh, prove that this cryptocurrency satisfies some security notions, and um, we tried to see if we could improve it by means of abstraction. Um, even before talking about um, Wimble Wimble itself, um, can I get a show of hands of how many of you know what is a UTXO? Oh, wow, okay. So in... Um, in, um, in Bitcoin, at some point, you have to inject money into the system. And the way you do it is that you create a transaction that only specifies some outputs. You put um, a value, and you associate this value, this credit, to some verification key. And if you know the signing key associated to this verification key, then you can spend the money. And the way that you do it is that you create a new transaction where you specify in the outputs how much of this money you are giving to which verification key, and you would sign this transaction with your signing key. Now, you would have the transaction to be balanced. If I forget about fees and stuff like that, I would have that the sum of the output should be equal to the value associated to this input. And then it goes on and on like that. So, for example, if I want to send, um, if I have one Bitcoin and I want to send you to you two Bitcoins, I would have to create a transaction and I would have to find true verification key whose value adds up to the amount that I want to send you. Okay? And uh, there is no reason for which in the output, the, the output should be only the recipient. It could be, for example, a change that I want to keep for myself. Um, now, on the other side, when I receive a payment, I, how do I avoid that double spending? How do I avoid that this uh, signing key has not been used twice? And the way that I do so is that I construct a list of verification key together with the associated values that can spend the money. And the way that I do so is that I look at the whole transaction history and I see the outputs and I check that they have not been spent. Um, so again, if I, start, if I download, if I have a new Bitcoin client, the way that I um, should accept new transaction is I download the whole transaction history, which a few days ago amounted to more than 200 gigabytes. I verify all the transactions and then I construct this list. And there is a great deal of difference between downloading this whole transaction history and downloading only the list of unspent transaction output, this UTXO set that I mentioned, and, uh, which right now amounts to more or less 4 gigabytes. Um, and there is no reason for which I would have to download the entire transaction history rather than this set. And this is uh, what's very difficult to achieve and at the same time where, uh, what in some form at least Mimbo Wimbo achieves. Um, now, back to the improvements that I wanted to mention. So, the first improvement that I mentioned is coin join, which is adds up anonymity. And the way it does so is by noticing that in the inputs, there is no reason for which all these signatures should belong to the same person. So, if I were to get together with other friends that are making uh, other transactions at the same time, instead of signing only my little transaction, we could construct together 
by coordination um, a bigger transaction that specifies the outputs, all our outputs, and we would sign instead this bigger transaction. And by means of shuffling, this would destroy the link that we have between the sender and the recipient. Now, if there, it's, uh, there are some contributions which are a bit more complicated than that. For example, if I want to hide to the other participant how much money, um, no, which are my recipients, but the bottom line of this is that with cooperation, I can achieve some form of anonymity, and, um, and that is always good to have friends. Um, cut through um, is not really possible in Bitcoin, but the fundamental idea is that if at some point I'm creating some money and attributing it to Bob, and then Bob sends it to Charlie, the ledger itself has no need to record the fact that Bob at some point had some money. This can easily be forgotten, and the way we call it is, uh, is cut through. Um, finally, the last um, feature, privacy feature, that was uh, initially envisioned for Bitcoin is called confidential transactions and is the most cryptographically consistent. And the basic idea is that if you want to hide the value in a Bitcoin transaction, you can replace them with commitments. If you don't know what commitment schemes are, you can think of them as uh, encryption. If you don't know what encryption is, uh, whatever. Um, but the basic idea is that um, commitments are really what we want. They are, in the case of Penderson commitment, they are perfectly adding, so they perfectly hide the values, and they are binding in the sense that once I selected this commitment, I can really change my mind about how much value I put in there. And um, at this point, one problem would be how do I check that the transaction is balanced, that the sum of the outputs minus the sum of the inputs is equal to zero. And the way that I would do it is that the, the transaction, the person that's creating the transaction, would select the opening so that they are sum up to zero. And at this point, if the sum of the commitments in the outputs minus the inputs is the identity element, it would mean necessarily that the values add up to zero. And therefore, the transaction is balanced. Now, it's a little bit more complicated than that, because implicitly these values are not natural elements. They are elements in a finite field. So for example, I could have as input p minus 1 and 1 on the other side. And I don't really want to have this problem of wrap around. So I, for, in order to, to fix that, I have to add a range proof. Uh, simulation extractable zero knowledge proof that says that this value is, for example, 32 bits long. Um, and this is sort of the starting point for Mimbo Wimbo. Um, so, if I were to take back confidential transactions in the way that I explained it before, I would have, uh, instead of these values, again, these commitments, and I would have uh, some sort of opening associated to them, and a transaction would have, again, this signature, and then the values replaced by commitments. Now, there is another way in which I can check that uh, this transaction is balanced, and is not to force the person to put uh, the openings to be equal to zero, but to, put, uh, to, to, let, to define um, the excess, what I co will call the excess, as the sum of the outputs minus sum of the inputs, and, and notice that this is a R group element. And we can see this as a public key of which only the sender which uh, has the inputs, and the recipient, which has the outputs, know their respective secret key. So in theory, they could get together and prove to anybody knowledge of uh, this secret key by making a signature, for example, on the empty element. And this, in some sense, would prove that they know the discrete log of the group element, and therefore that it was a commitment to zero. And if it was a commitment to zero, it was a, tra a balanced transaction. This is sort of the way it works. And, um, and the crazy idea of Bimble Wimble, what, what makes it beautiful is that they, it actually says, well, right now, when I want to make a transaction, I have two secret keys. I have an opening to the commitment, and I have uh, also a signing key. What if I just get rid of the signing keys? What if the, the signature that I'm making would be sufficient both for proving that a transaction is balanced and for proving that I really know the openings to this commitment? There is no a priori reason for which this would work, and this is what we try to prove. Um, so, using this, if I were to go back to the initial slide of where we saw the flow of transactions, how do I create some money? I would have to create a new transaction where the value is replaced with a commitment again, and I would have to specify in something that I call the supply how much value I'm creating. And uh, the signature would be valid under the, commit the commitment in the output minus the commitment with zero binding factor to the, to the value that's being declared. And it will sort of prove that this commitment is really creating this value, and then the secret key for it. 
um, how once I created this uh, this commitment, how do I spend it? And the way that I do it is that I would create again a transaction. I would put as input my commitment. I would declare the change, how much value I want to take for myself. And on the other side, the recipient would uh, create a commitment to the value the, of the reminder, the value that we agreed upon. And together, using our respective openings, we would create this signature. Right? So actually, what we do in the paper is uh, we show the way in which these you can do it non-interactively. Um, so here, when, when uh, Mimblewimble sort of starts to shine, and um, if, I have one, if I have two transactions, and again, these transactions are just two lists of commitments, which have, uh, can be verified with a signature, and the signature is valid again under the sum of the outputs minus the sum of the inputs, I can also consider what is called an aggregated transaction. And what does it mean, the addition here? It means that I take the inputs of the two transactions and I concatenate them, and I put it in a new transaction. I take the outputs and I concatenate them. I consider the union of the two. And now what is the access of this transaction? Well, the inputs get added together and the outputs get added together. So it's the addition of the two accesses, of the two previous uh, um, accesses. And, uh, we know of a primitive, namely aggregated signatures, which allow me, without knowing the signing key of any of the two transactions, to squash together these two signatures and have only one which accounts for both at the same time. And, um, and the beautiful thing about this is that it gives me some... Uh, I can then shuffle the transaction, and I would destroy the link that was between uh, the two transactions individually. And also, I can do this any time. I do, not have to, I do not need to wait for any party to be online. I can do this non-interactively and when I want. Um, and there is another thing that is interesting to notice, and it is that, um, and this is the scalability feature of Mimble Wimble, is that if I have a transaction where the output goes back as input, the intermediate thing that we talked about before, well, at this point, the final transaction what do we have? We have that the same coin, the same commitment, will appear both as input and as output. And therefore, it does not contribute to the final sum. What does this mean? It means that what if, what if we think uh, cut through is the way, in the way we thought about this before? What if we just remove these commitments? Then the signature will still be valid, because the access, again, has these terms cancelling out each other. So they don't really contribute, so I can re get rid of them and still have a transaction which is valid. So in a way, the only price that I'm paying for aggregating two transactions is adding this uh, group element over here, and in the meantime, I get rid of all the intermediate things. And the way that we so this sort of fits together is beautiful and, and very simple at the same time. Um, and in Mimblewimble, they used to say that everything is a transaction. Even the ledger, at this point, you can think of it just as a list of coins that have been generated at some point and then squashed together, so it has only outputs, and the supply, the money that is being generated, accounts for the total amount of money that is available in the system. And the signature is, uh, accounts for all the past transactions. So instead of downloading, if you remember the picture of before, if I want to have uh, some cryptographic notion of validity of the UTXO, I just have to download this, verify the signature and all the range proofs, and I'm done. I don't have to download 200 gigabytes of data. Um, so what did we do? What we took Mimblewimble, we abstracted away the notion of homomorphic commitments, simulation extractable non-interactive zero-knowledge proofs and uh, arguments, and, um, and aggregate signatures. We provide um, some security notion that we believe describe the security properties that we want from Mimblewimble, namely, it is not possible to spend more money than is available in the system, which protects the system, it is not possible to steal money from honest users. We want to protect the users, and the amounts are hidden. You, we are protecting the transfers of money from user to user. And uh, then we prove these, uh, the security of Mimblewimble, and in order to do so, we have to introduce new security assumptions of compatibility between the signature scheme and the commitment scheme. This is, comes from the fact that, as you saw before, a commitment to zero acts as a public key for signing a transaction. And uh, we gave also examples of a commitment and signature scheme that satisfy this property, namely Pedersen commitments and Schnorr signatures, which is what has been used in the green implementation of uh, Mimblewimble right now. 
And we gave another example, Pendersen uh, commitments and BLS signature, which, which acts better in terms of aggregation, because in BLS signature, aggregation of signature is only one group element. Um, more formally, what did we prove is that um, inflation, again, protects the system. It says that it is very difficult for an adversary to create a ledger and a transaction which is consuming more money than what's available in the system. And intuitively, you can say that this can happen in two ways. Either the adversary is breaking something in um, the cryptographic primitives used in the ledger, for example, the, commitment, the binding property of the commitment scheme, or the enforceability notion for the signature, or the range proofs, or it's creating a transaction which is not balanced. And in order to create a transaction, transa creating a transaction which is not balanced means that the signature is valid under a commitment that is non-zero. And again, you see that there is this sort of a relation between commitments and signature which needs to be um, put in place and formalized. Um, then we proved that it is not possible for an adversary that is observing honest user interacting and is interacting itself with the ledger to steal at any point in time one coin that belongs to an honest user. And this is uh, much more difficult to prove. Um, finally, we proved transaction indistinguishability. And it basically says that if we have two transactions of the same length, then they, you cannot really distinguish one from the other in a sort of uh, in CPA game. Um, and actually, um, this is sort of a weak notion of privacy, and we're working on a stronger notion that we're going to integrate in the full version. Because in fact, um, if, you, if you consider two transactions, and these two transactions have nothing in common, then when you aggregate them, these two accesses, the public keys, sort of uniquely identify the two constituting transactions of these aggregated transactions, because they are the subset sum of some of these commitments. So I can, in some sense, derive back which transaction made it. And this is a property that I will that implicitly I, I do not want to be there. And um, there, is, there was a proposal, namely kernel offset from Andrew Polstra, that is now integrated into Green, that prevents this. And this is something we will uh, we'll put in the full version, strengthening the, the privacy game for uh, transaction indistinguishability. Um, this is basically all I have to say so far. And um, I'd like to add that I am uh, at the end of my PhD. And uh, I am looking for a postdoc. So uh, if you're looking for somebody that can tell you that your uh, proof system is, is secure and uh, can go all the way down to implementing hashing into the curve or hashing into a field element, I'm, uh, maybe I'm the right person to talk to. <laughs> Thank you. Questions for Michele? Uh, so um, this notion of transactional linkability is what what ex what exactly does it cover? Like, does it also cover like user linkability? Like, uh, spend, when I spend, like, it goes from a user to another user and so on. Is it like something like same same level as Zcash, or is it like weaker? For well, now, it covers the fact that if I created um, if I created some money and then I sent it to some other user and I squashed together the, the, all these transactions, then these transactions are indistinguishable. Okay, so it's really for a particular transaction, the the amount, the money, the amount of money, because uh, so. But what what about could this money be traced? Like, okay, so the money can be traced later uh, uh, unless you add this uh, kernel offset thing. Okay, and uh, this is something that we will put soon uh, in the full version. This uh, relation between commitments and signature is that like. Is that standard notion, or is it like something that you need on top of, like when you do when you do implement your blockchain, you actually need to take care of that, or it's something that is proper of Mimble Wimble that we introduced. Uh, so it's proper. Of, so does that require like can it be? Do you need standard standard commitments and signature? Or yes, but it's it's a property that you need to prove on a pair of on of a commitment and signature. You need to prove that this pair commitment and signature satisfy a property. Namely, for example, the at least the fact that a commitment to zero is a valid verification key or can be mapped to a valid verification key. All right. Thank you. Let's uh, thank Michele again.